All right, folks, hello and welcome to a legacy stream. I haven't streamed legacy in a minute, but yes, Esprevile is here. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a minute since I've streamed Esprevile. I was super high on this deck at some point, and then, you know, started working on other things, started working on Green Red Reclaimer. It kind of fell a little bit to the, way, to the side, but uh, the actual creator of the deck, Jeff Lynn, uh, took down this past weekend Legacy PTQ with this list that you see in front of you right now. Uh, the list looks super sweet, and we're going to be trying it through a league. Let's see how it feels. If you are enjoying this type of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can get uh, notified whenever new videos get uploaded. And of course, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Uh, okay, going into the deck list. Um, the usual suspects are here. We very much are a meddling mage. Baleforce Strix deck, uh, Aether Vial, is the sweetest piece of the puzzle here. Um, of course, allowing us to play at instant speed and allowing us to play in an uncounterable fashion. We also have a bunch of um, cantrips in the form of Brainstorm. Charming Prince acts as a pseudo country by blinking your recruiter, recruiter of the guards. Uh, blinking your Baron, Gilded Drake plus Baron plus uh, Caracas. Obviously, it's an insane, insane combo. The Fairy Time Rivaler messing with opponents, uh, instant sorceries and whatnot. Um, we have a couple of fun offs which we have not had in the past. Uh, we have the usual suspect. We have Peacekeeper. We have Palace Jailer, Old Border, by the way. Hell yeah. And Venser. But we have a couple of new uh, one-offs. Hull Breacher, of course, this is uh, the most expensive card in Magic Online right now. It's like 115 tickets or something ridiculous. Three mana, three two flash. If an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of draw steps, instead they create a, you create a treasure token. So you really mess with opponents' brainstorms and stuff like that. Denying them the possibility of drawing extra cards. Of course, nice combo with Palace Jailer because even if they steal your Monarch, they don't get to draw cards, which is sweet. It gives you mana. Feeble Thup the Lost, basically an Elvish Visionary that we can bounce with Caracas. Of course, cute interaction. And the other random one of is Tide Hollow Scholar, which I honestly don't know why, but it's here. So. <laughs> Plague Engineer and Soul Herder runs up the, the rest of the deck. Of course, we have Force of Will. Why would not? Why would we not have Force of Will, right? The sideboard is even more one-offs because all of the ones that we have uh, wasn't good enough. Of course, we we have a one-to-one -one off because we can tutor for them thanks to recruit off the card. Like this is this is the core piece of the deck, and this is the reason why this deck can't really exist in modern because this is very very much a toolbox deck, and without having access to recruit off the guard. There's not really that much of a point to the deck. But we have a Giver of Rooms, Fourth Bridge pa Prowler. Yes, this card I actually had to read it because it was <laughs> either roll limited and it wasn't even that good there. So uh, I actually had to <laughs> had to remember what this one did. Uh, Ether's one cannon against Storm and stuff. Remorse will play it against Graveyards. Uh, two more copies of Gilded Drake. This card is actually insanely expensive in paper, which is funny. Thieving Sky Driver, it's a super cool one. So you can steal your opponents, like Gather Vials or like random stuff like that. It's pretty hilarious. Um, pretty funny. Lavinia, of course, against the, the combo strategies. Sky Cleave Apparition and Plague Engineer. Then we have the fourth copy of Force, the one of Random Lane of the Void, and one of Rest in Peace, and one of Deafening Silence. So many random one offs, which is pretty funny. And of course, Eorion tying the whole thing together. The one thing that I'm missing in this list is Flicker Wisp. I would definitely like to ask uh, Jeff about this. Like, what made him basically just straight up cut the Flicker Wisp instead of, like, it seems like Charming Prince, maybe it's better? I don't know, but we'll see. We're gonna be firing off a league, and I'll see you there. All right, buckle up for the very, very first round of today's stream. We're gonna be playing, oof, turn one vial. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. I think I'm gonna go turn one Caracas. Uh, actually, no, because um, that that means that I can't play, I can't play Strix on turn two, so never mind. Yeah, it's in the reserve list. Oh, look at that. Huh. Restricts. Oof. Now we're cooking, baby. 
So I'm probably gonna go cast Recruiter and go get Charming Prince, and then we can violin into Charming Prince. <laughs> Never mind, my opponent's gonna waste me. Not really that big of a deal, honestly. It does mess with my curve, obviously, but... Uh, well, we can't waste there. So there's nothing I'm blocking, so I'm just attacking. So next turn we're going to be able to Recruiter, be it by playing the Recruiter, which is casting it, or by violin it in. Richard and Port. Okay. Nice and pleasant conversation about the reserve list. Is there such a thing? Interesting. So I think I'm just going to waste them, right? It's not like this wasteland is really going to be doing much else. Uh, there's nothing that they can battle in that really threatens me here. Can Valen in Thalia or whatever, but I guess I could have played Soul Herder there. I think it's better for me to recruit her, and then we can recruit it for recruiter if we want to. Another port. To kill me, Tarantino. Welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold with that Prime sub. Thank you for the subscription. Eight months, beautiful thing. Um, okay, it's like a wisp. This doesn't do anything to to stop the battle. Like it just, it just messes me because it's gonna effectively time walk, but this uses last known information, so. Um, I'm actually thinking about putting Soul Herder into play here. And then they blink here, and if they, if they plow... Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Soul Herder. Like, I'm not really looking for anything, and now my opponent can plow here if they want to, but, like, I could just do nothing. And if they plow, that means that they're not going to kill my... They're not going to tap my land, and I, I can just recruit her for something else. Yeah, so they tap my land, that's fine. Uh, sure. So let's play that. I guess I should have played Caracas. Just gonna pass the turn here. Vial comes back. Blink. Strix. Force. Without a blue card. Feels bad, man. Mm -hmm. I guess I should have played the Caracas because... I kind of don't want to flicker wisp this. Nothing to do there. That's just fine. Source to plowshares. Okay. If I'm going to attack with Thalia, we can just plow the Skyclave to get a 3 3 block. I assume they're just going to attack with Flicker Wisp. Nope. Okay. Plow that one. 
Can I have my 3-3, please? Thank you very much. Honestly, kind of a greedy attack there. There was kind of no reason for them to do that. I'll take it, though. Vista. One card left in hand. Am I just supposed to put Yurin into play? No. It seems like a waste of a turn. I think I'm just gonna recruit her. If we want, we can just recruit her for recruiter. Which seems interesting. No, Colby, uh this this uh, month is gonna be a little bit rough, but I'm I'm it, it's gonna be there. It's gonna be there, fear not. Um But this month it's a little bit tough because I'm going back to work basically <laughs> um we can play another strix we can play recruit i'm just gonna recruit for recruiter get that engine going you did send me the list though right yeah you did we have two in the queue for now. Maybe I can do them tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm just gonna do them tomorrow. No need for me to fetch because I don't know which basic I wanna go get just yet, and also because um, I have brainstorm in my deck. You got me. That's hot, actually. That's really hot. Another wisp. Yep. So we're just gonna recruit her for engineer. P -p Plague Engineer. <laughs> if we need to force, we can force. We, we probably won't need to. Just gonna take six in the air. We can turn these Baleful Strix into effectively gain three. That does not seem worth it though. Especially with the Yorion in, in the deck, right? <laughs> we can also use um, the Prince to gain life. I'm probably just holding this mage for force. Yeah, I got my island. This goes up to three. Brainstorm. I mean, there's just no reason for me to do anything, so I'll just. Just do this. Pass the turn. Because I can attack, but like if they have Stoneforge Mystic, that actually puts me in a tough situation for no reason whatsoever. Like we're just winning the slow game very easily, so like we're up a million cards. Just gonna name Elemental with the with the Plague Engineer. Wasteland.
you out of here. X ones, you say. <laughs> X ones, you say. Huh. Hardcast batter skull. Let's just let's just win the game right now. It wouldn't surprise me to see a concession here. All right, opponent wants to keep on chugging along. Chug with everything. Fetch for probably a white source. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, do we want to reset the engineer? Yes, I don't think so. They are out of. Yeah, I'm just gonna name human. Draw card first. Trigger once. Let's get. We're we're just insanely ahead. Like let's just get cards at random here. <laughs> let's just get cards from random, and we're gonna be fine. Yeah, it's kind of hard that we can reset the engineer. It's pretty neat. Like this deck just has so many tricks like that one. Now we have Barin. I think my opponent just gave up and they're just farming the clock. Yeah, it's a good matchup. Yeah, it was a good matchup before and like we're playing Jorgen and they are not, right? Play that. They're just farming the clock because it's no, they know that it's gonna be a, a long match, but like we're still ahead on clock, <laughs> so. Probably not that big of a deal. Anyway, second engineer sounds great. This is like the matchup for this guy. Giver of runes. Apparition sounds very, very good. Skydiver sounds nuts. I'll take your vial, thank you very much. I'll take your vial, thank you very much. Yeah, the forces are not great. Gilded Drake is interesting. But melee mage is probably worse than a Gilded Drake. Even Hall Breacher is pretty bad. Um Huh. How do I feel about Hall Breacher? Teferi is better than the cards that we have in our sideboard. Remorse for Cleric is interesting just as a 2-1 flyer. It's probably not where I want to be though. I think this is fine. Hmm. We're probably going to be fetching for basics. One almost to five. And if they lead on vile, I'm just going to force it. <clears throat> Land is perfect. Gilded Drake explanation. If you read the card, it's pretty much self-explanatory, honestly. <laughs> uh, do we want to force this? 
I don't think so. I feel like I want to save my force for something like a Palace Jailer or something like that. Um, what is good for in for the matchup? I mean, you get to steal their stuff. That's kind of the idea. But the power from the power from the card comes from the fact that you have multiple, multiple ways of just bouncing the great back to your hand. So you're stealing your opponent's creatures over and over again. This is not just a one-shot effect in this in this deck. Is there something that messes me up here? <laughs> My opponent could have battle skull in hand, so I'm just not gonna do anything. I don't have skull. If they equip, I'm gonna plow the stone forge in response. Two mana for what? For a Gita. <laughs> Sounds good. That's a great draw. All of these are very good draws. Hmm. Just gonna hold Breacher. So Stu planes and swamp. Oh, I guess I can't have swamp here, huh? Let's just do island. This is a combo, in case you're wondering. This is a combo, but it kind of doesn't work here. But it doesn't work here, so I think I'm just gonna attack. Of course, my opponent's not gonna block because their creature is worth a lot more than ours. But we can brainstorm here. Uh, I guess that I'm pitching this Gilded Drake if my opponent does anything, so... We definitely want... We can Charming Prince? So... Oh, man, this is an awkward spot. Like, I have to plow the Flicker Wisp, that's the easy part. <laughs> I, I'm gonna Scry with this Charming Prince, and I'm, I think I'm gonna bottom... I guess I could just bottom the force and the gilded drake. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's just do that actually. It's great too. Uh, we got punished by bottom in that extra land there, which is unfortunate. Certainly got punished for that. Just an argument for letting this resolve, I guess. There's an argument for letting this resolve because my opponent is probably gonna want to equip GT as well. And like the light doesn't really matter. How do I beat a batter school? Oof. So many ways. <laughs> um, we beat a batter skull by uh, trading with it, by taking it, by allowing, be, uh, stopping my opponent from getting it, by stealing it, by um, bouncing it, by bouncing it, by exiling it, by bouncing it, etc., etc., etc. Batter skull is not a particular problematic. My opponent says, I find the consistency of your 80 card deck draws frust frustrating. GG's though, like GG's, sounds good. All right, see you for the next round. All right, folks, welcome to round number two. Currently one and know. The biggest issue with this deck has always been its mana. And it, it's, it's only, it's, it's really great to see that that has never changed. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this hand though. Mana ha has always been the problematic aspect of this deck, but... Why are people still surprised well built your index function? I don't know. Opponent's doing the thing over there. The mill in the bubble is brutal. I think I'm in a situation where I have to force the bubble. There's no way I can do that and get away with it though. I can waste. The problem is with how my opponent's hand looks like, no, I, I just cannot, I, I cannot afford to force the bubble actually. Because if they have the draw seven, we just lose, right? The good thing is that we can fetch duels to our heart's contempt since my opponent's not gonna be wastelanding me. So at least that part is cool. Don't Ursa me, don't Ursa me. Uh, yeah, that's getting forced. Not loving my spot though. Not loving my spot at all. This Embry is gonna be an issue unless I find an answer pronto. They just had the echo in hand, that's brutal. At least we get we get a brand new hand at least, so that's something. Chalice for one. Chalice at least is not that amazing against us. So I guess then we shall play a medley mage. The thing is that we're guessing, right? We're guessing with this medley mage because like we we are in trouble against both Ursa and we're also in trouble against Karn. We're also in trouble against Narset, like 
it's just rough. Like, or we're just between a rock and a hard place. Ursa is probably the card that I can beat the least, I think. And naming something like Narset doesn't really make any sense because um, my opponent has access to both Narset and Hole Breacher. There was also an argument for just naming Ur uh, Mishra's Bubble so my opponent can't get their, their engine going, but... I think that Ursa is the card that I lose to the most. Concede to high deck. I don't think that's particularly at this point. We are we're past that point. I think. We can't beat this card, can we? How do we beat this card? Force of the top doesn't really do it. Oh, they can just coding this turn. Yeah, okay, so I'm just dead. Because they can just like replay the opal. Okay, so this seems okay, this seems okay, this seems okay, this seems okay. Canonist. I guess Canonist is weird, right? Uh, this actually doesn't really steal anything. This card sounds nuts. Rest in peace. So these, I think, are the cards that I'm the most interested in. Yeah, I, I am super perplexed by the one of Leyline 2. I don't know what the point of it really is. Halbreacher sounds good. Medley Mage sounds... As weird as it sounds, sounds pretty bad. I'm probably just completely messing this up, right? This sideboarding is probably absolute nonsense. Usually yeah, I do like to cut some source of plowshares in this matchup. <laughs> Skyclip's good, Hull Breacher is good, Barring's probably okay. Engineer is kind of as a hedge against Psy. I think I'm doing that. Kind of Wasteland. Actually, the Wasteland is not bad against them. They don't play that many lands, and they play a bunch of... Like, all of their lands are basically non-basics. Like, all of the ones that matter. So I think that actually Wasteland in them is, is a fair thing. The card that I'm the most uh, interested in, honestly, is the Canonist. Because most of the spells that they play are just artifacts. So Canonist maybe might underperform, but... I mean I have to I have to keep this right is major and echo not good I don't think so no like I'd rather have Lavinia than major and echo they have so many ways that they kill you right and that's that's the issue with mainly mage in this matchup 
like you name Echo and they play Karn or they play an Ursa. Like that's that's what these Stompy decks are good at doing. They have like a bunch of must answer threats, and if you don't answer all of them, you just die. <laughs> so, um, opponent moves to five. I think that this is a spot where, if given the option, I'm going to try to brainstorm for for like a force, if we have to. Like if my opponent goes for turn one echo or something. We have eight forces that we're looking for. But then we can like force into, into Scholar, so. Basic Island, Mox Opal. Pass. I think I'm gonna brainstorm here mostly because I'm gonna be using my mana every single turn. So I'm not gonna be able to play this brainstorm, and I think I'd rather make sure that I can I can resolve this brainstorm before we before my opponent puts like a Narset or something like that into play. If I get stuck with that uh, brainstorm in hand, that's that's just a disaster. Just get Tundra here, black and blue. What are you cooking with over there, opponent? Or CG07 to give it a follow. Ah, so we kept a speculative hand. So Embry is by far the easiest thing for them to cast. But Karn is the most threatening. But there, there's no card that they can draw that allows them to cast Karn. So I'm just going to take the Emery. You have a problem here, New Order, yeah. Yeah, we can Recruiter for that, or we can just Hole Breacher. Like, I'm probably gonna Recruiter for Hole Breacher here. Dekarn just kind of doesn't really matter. Uh, alternatively, we can Recruiter for... We can Recruiter for Soul Herder. I think I'm gonna Manly Mage. So the thing that we don't want to see here is my opponent doing like Ursa, uh, like Ancient Tomb into like something that kills us. Um, so we're gonna play Medley Mage. Oh, I guess I should have played Hull Breacher there, huh? Now we're gonna name Echo of Aeons. They have Unknown and Karn. But if they have LED into Echo, we just lose, right? I'm just gonna name Karn. They know about this Venser. I 
I'm just going to pass the turn and I'm going to hold Breacher in instead. And we're going to slowly but surely start accruing some advantage. Uh, if they play a draw 7 and they have 2 hold Breachers, they still only get 7 treasures, right? They don't get 14. It's a replacement effect, so I'm assuming that that's how that works. Their second hold breacher, that's fine. I think we're kind of in an okay spot here. Return and step. So now we can't get comboed out. So that's one of the pieces that's locked out. And then what we can do is we can name whole breacher. We can name whole breacher and then we can bounce both of their whole breachers. Uh, we can also just name Ursa. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna need Morsa. It seems like the only card that can get them out of this. Like, now their whole breachers can't attack. I guess Walking Ballista could potentially be a problem. I really doubt that they play very many of those. That's not a card I was expecting them to have in their deck. Gross. Oh, wow. That's right. We don't get to draw cards. All right. I think I'm throwing this game. <laughs> Starting to feel like I'm throwing this game here a little bit. We got to gotta tighten up. Got to tighten up a little bit because this is getting messy. This is getting messy here. My opponent gets one turn to play to do something with this Karn. Yeah, I honestly wasn't expecting them to have Echo in Truth. Is that even good? Honestly, like we're fine, right? It just feels like we're fine. Like, they just used an Echo in Truth to bounce both of my meddling mages instead of using the Echo in Truth to, like, attempt to combo me. So, like, they, oh, I think we're fine, actually. That, yeah. Yeah, I think that we're just fine. There's even an argument for thinking that it, it was just correct to do that. They plus the Karn. So we attack, attack, attack. Opponent probably blocks here and blocks here. We Plague Engineer. Plague Engineer, name Merfolk, I guess. Maybe Parrot is more fun, but maybe maybe oh, it's it's correct to name Merfolk actually because they have they have Emery. 
I would just merely mage name me Lattice. Or we can just like Vencer. Vial not going to face of Karn, but if they lattice, we just attack the Karn and kill it, so... They they probably just have to get Walking Ballista here. Yeah, Engineer is non-symmetrical. Engineer is a messed up card. This card is really messed up. Like, it's not okay. <laughs> this card is not okay. Like, you might think that it's okay, but it's not. Sigh. Sure. That makes clocking the card a little bit more annoying. Symmetry is so much fun from a deck building perspective. It is cleaner. It is cleaner. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's cleaner for it to not be symmetrical, honestly, but like that just takes the power level through the roof. The thing here is that we have clean attacks towards this Karn, so... Like they can play like two zeros maybe if they play two zeros maybe that's maybe that's problematic if they play two zero casting ghost spells and that gives them two one ones i'm definitely happy i brought in this engineer though it's it's kind of doing work one and deep in the tank about what to do with this karn this whole preacher is pulling its weight, holy crap. This is the probably the only reason why we're still in this game, honestly. It just cuts so many of the routes. Alright, there we go. Finally realize they finally chose what they're gonna do with uh, their Karn. Ensnaring Bridge. It's not a good idea because you can't cast that. Never mind. Now this stops for mana. They have another zero. Ugh. We can Teferi, we minus here, we serve. That doesn't work, right? So Teferi minus there, we attack, 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 attack. My opponent blocks, blocks, blocks. They block this here, this here, and this there.
I feel like I want to venture this. Like if I'm going to be doing that, I think I want to venture this. Because that puts another that puts another threat onto the battlefield. So let's do that. Yeah, we're also giving them a treasure with the fairy bounce. That's also true. So they block there. I probably need to trade here. And then they're going to double block there, which gives them an emery, which is fine. But it gets the whole richer of the battlefield. Karn goes up to two, but then we have blo attacker, attacker, and my opponent doesn't have good. Oh, I guess they can ensnare and bridge. They can ensnare and bridge plus Emery. Which is a little bit annoying. But we do get the whole breacher off the battlefield, which seems like a big deal. Because that opens up a, lo a lot of lines for us. Okay. So next turn, basically we have the same attack, but better. Because we have one more threat. So here's the Serum Bridge. Mm -hmm. Now we send everything at them. And we send everything at the Karn. Uh, that's not what you wanted to do. They probably wanted. Oh, they they okay. They they just wanted to destroy that so they can play zeros. Never mind. No, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, so yeah, so we just attack everything. I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, wow, what a mistake. Oh, wow, what a mistake. Um, Wow. Damn it. Well, that sucks. Whoopsie. You know, the thing about damping matrix in this side of Titan to beat Heliod, I don't like it. Unless you're playing Karn. If you're playing Karn, it makes a lot more sense. But at the same time, like, if you're playing Karn and you had like seven mana against Heliod, you're probably going to be able to find something else that you can win with. They don't have Emery. Emery, they didn't trade with the Scholar. So like they, they have one unknown card in their hand. They can't draw cards because of my own Hall Breacher. So I think what we do now is we just play Apparition, exile the Karn, then we violin in Meddling Mage naming Karn, and then on the following turn we're gonna name Meddling Mage on Ensnare Bridge and we're gonna have to Fairy Bounce the Bridge and it's gonna get stuck in their hand. I think that's the line.
Opponent can't draw seven because of Holy Reacher. Honestly, that, that may be the line. Because they know my hand. With this, as opposed to Narset, with this card, if they if they have the the draw seven, we don't draw anything at all. Oh, I should I should violin in this Nemi walking ballista. And response with with the trigger on the stack. So now I'm going to name Echo Veons because Stabilista answers the whole breacher. Yes, name Echo of Eons. This goes up. Oh, that's sick. Great top deck. <laughs> good top deck is good. Okay, so they're gonna get the Emery, which is fine. The Emery is just not gonna do anything. It's just gonna be chop blocking because my opponent's at six. So we're just gonna have sure. So we're gonna kill the hold breacher. Now we apparition the bridge. And we bounce the Psy. Oh I play a plow. Damn it. So many things. They can't echo. Just make it so they can't Emery. So many things to keep in, to keep into into account. It's crazy. It's basically a free attack because my opponent doesn't have good blocks, right? Can't echo. They can play another karma. They go down to two, and they can't get a bridge, so they can't really protect another card. So Karn is not particularly concerning, and we get him. All right. Made a couple of mistakes there, which is not a rare occurrence whenever I'm playing this deck. Like, this deck is... is tight. This deck is tight. What can we steal with this? We can steal the Ensnaring Bridge. Which gives us control over it. Seems just worse than exiling it with this operation or whatever. Plague Engineer did, did some real heavy lifting there, so I think I want the second copy over Fable Thup. Fable Thup. Th 
what's the flavor like this guy is like in the middle of of a fight like in the middle of a war and like he just doesn't notice where he is Yorion. His hands has a force and once again terrible mana. Wasteland is interesting. Pointing kept seven. Much better. Keep this, throw the swamp. A Yorion deck stops approves. Nice. That's a YOLO if I've ever seen one. I think I have to get the Vial going. I know that I could have played the Deafening Silence there. If they draw exactly a Goveons off the top, we're fucked, but... Like, I need to play this Hall Breacher ASAP, basically. And I didn't know that I was going to be drawing a land, so either Vial's better. Charming Prince. Oh, I was going to say, please play the Echo Vaeons. Scrubland. Nice little scry value. But both of these, these things are great, right? So put on top, put on top. This goes up to three. Swing. And I'm bouncing the Lion Side Diamond there because uh, if my opponent wants to play it for a turn, then they can't play anything else. Easy game, easy life. See you in the next round. Alright folks, welcome to round number uh, three. This is round number three, currently 2-0 and oh with Esper Vile. This hand is perfect. Perfect hand. Volcanic Island, Delver. Yep. I feel like in this deck, it, it kind of feels like a combo deck sometimes, because I feel like in this deck, I instead brainstorm so, so much. Because your mana is just so weird. Your mana is just so, so strange that you are very often just stuck on mana. So you just need to brainstorm just because. Like, you just need to brainstorm because you're not going to be able to... Oh my god, this is... Backbreaking. I did not know that we were playing against this type of version. That's brutal. I could have played around Stifle, but I did not think that I was playing against Stifle. So my mana matters a lot more than my opponent's. So I think I want all of these lands. I think I want all of these lands. I don't love the scrub land, but like it's a black source, I can have like a one shot, 
a one shot use out of that. They don't have days, otherwise it would have been very, very good value for them to just daze my my force there, so. Scry two here. Well these are great cards. So I think I wanna draw I think I probably don't care about the plow just yet, so I'd rather draw Bile, and I think I'm going to Wasteland my opponent this coming turn. Let's see, my opponent reveals off the top, Lightning Bolt. Okay. I, I don't think I'm supposed to play around days, so I'm just gonna upkeep my opponent's Volk. Brazen Borrower? So we're going to draw a plow. Ugh, brutal. I'm going to Teferi though, I think. We're going to Teferi bounce the Delver. Yikes. All right, I, I really wasn't expecting the Bracing Borrower to come down. That really messes up with my plans. They're thinking whether they want to bolt me here, which is probably correct because it allows them to set up lethal. Yeah, just bolt face. So we're just gonna bounce the flip Delver. Second plow, okay. So if this Delver flips, we lose. If they don't, if the Delver doesn't flip or they don't find the lightning bolt, we could be in okay shape. Don't flip. Sick. Point incorrectly goes face. Yikes. I think we're just dead here. This bracing bar will really change the clock. Bracing bar will really messed everything up. <sighs> okay, um, this card sounds pretty solid. Probably don't want forces. We do want these. Gilded Drake is interesting in this matchup. Like, stealing Goif can be a big deal. This stops Days and Force. Unsure whether that's good enough or not. Peacekeeper is usually pretty bad against these decks. I wonder what the giver is for. I really wonder what the giver is for in this match in this uh, deck list. Let's try the Lavinia. I kind of want to try out the Lavinia. My opponent has eight free spells, and um, this could also mess up with their. No, I guess that they they don't have any. This is no creature. Never mind. I was thinking of the the Delve, the Delve, uh, the three three flyer. But this this is just no creature, so never mind. So it just messes with days and force. So I guess I don't want it. Remorseful cleric sounds good. Uh, 
God damn it, this stupid basic swamp. There's one. There's one in the entire 80 cards, and I've been I've, I've been seeing it as my only land multiple times already. It's pretty funny. I'm gonna keep this. We have the combo, but I don't think we're gonna be able to put it together, so. Giver might be for the Drossy. I literally have no idea. Like, Eldrassi is a really good matchup for us just by design. So we're going to be able to force the issue on this folk. They chose to not shuffle though. So here comes the stifle. No stifle. Okay. Island. Wump. Vehicle Strix. Seems like the only person I can think to give, have a giver rather than mom. Yeah. It does sound weird, that's for sure. Did you draw the stifle now? You don't. Didn't. Four speeching ponder. That's good for us. It's very good for us. <sighs> Bolt my thingy? No. Ancient Grudge. That's funny. That's really funny. Delver of Secrets. Land would be great. I'll take that too. Yeah, good old two for one. You love to see it. Wooden mandrills. We can force this, but like Baron also answers this. Also, the play engineer on board answers it. So I'm just gonna name Lightning Bolt here. Fuck, okay. We're winning this race, so this is this is good for us. Never mind. Let's see what we're drawing. Pog. Pog to both of these. So I guess we Drake first. So the fairy on top, Drake on top. Like Drake is just a nuts draw. Just 
Take four. Of note, this says creature you own. It doesn't say creature you control. Pyroblast is gross. There is a Teferi on top of the deck. So I'm just going to gain three here. Another Pyroblast? Nope. Not a great draw. Not a great draw, but it's okay. So they're going to get to redeploy the mandrills. <clears throat> they didn't fetch. So we can force anything if we need to. I think I'm probably trading though. I really hope I don't have to force anything. So if I force this, we have no more Yorion. I think I think I have to force this though. Man, they drew the fork bolt. Why can't you draw? Just draw the lightning bolt opponent. Come on, just draw a bolt. Having to pitch Yorion there is huge. That also grows the goyf. I think I'm just gonna, just gonna throw both of these charming princes. Don't have another one. Come on. Okay. Gonna hold on to this for brainstorm, I think. Next turn, I think I'm probably just bouncing the goif. I, I really need the card. Have I been enjoying Time Spiral Limited? Yeah, a lot. It's been awesome. My latest deck has been super sweet. I'm gonna show it in between rounds. Man, we have a lot of pretty good draws here. We have a lot of pretty good draws, like Brainstorm's pretty solid. Um, Apparition's great.
A recruiter is great. Opponent used the Ancient Grudge here, which is a big deal. Source the Plushers would be great too. I mean, I have to I have to trade here. My opponent is going to play like a Delver or something, but like I, it's a lethal attack, so. Yep. Please, something? Something? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about, baby. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna vial here. Ding. <laughs> Don't stifle me, bro. Don't stifle me. Don't stifle me. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I guess I'm gonna blow up the bulk. Sure, or whatever. I think that they might have gone a little bit overboard with the with the answers to artifacts. Like that card seems really bad against us. Two one flyer. Let's go, baby. I have to imagine that this medley mage is doing insane work right now. Because otherwise, none of this makes any sense. Something good? Any tips on how to not waste clock on MTGO as much? F2, baby. F2 on F6. If you have to click on the OK button every time you, you want to pass priority, you waste insane amounts of clock. So using the F2, the F2 command, the, the F2 thingy, it's just huge. It's a very, very big deal. Play Legacy more, the wasteland has gone so expensive in the geo, so I sold my set for like 200 ticks. Wait, really? Is that true? I didn't even know that. Wasteland. Holy crap, it's 45 tickets. Whoa, that's insane. I think I won't rest in peace against my opponent. The real MVP though. <laughs> Let's talk about the real MVP. <laughs> Let's talk about the real MVP of that match. My opponent has like answer to it. it has access to a million answers, so I don't think that scholar is gonna be where I wanna be. Like they they have explosive, not explosives. Uh, they have uh, ancient grudge and like stuff like that. So uh, this looks like a very good hand. Definitely the best hand I've seen so far in in the matchup. Like 
Mm. I'm doing this because it plays around Stifle very nicely. Because my three other lands are fetch lands. I think I want to play around Stifle here with my opponent being on the play. It's very likely they kept the Stifles in. Okay. I want double blue before double white. Is that correct? Those are some really interesting pickups. Door saw some really interesting pickups. I don't think this guy's gonna be relevant enough. But I think I want all the other cards. <laughs> Definitely want another land. I could have viled that guy, but like I don't think a 2-3 does anything. So I don't want to vile that guy. I really like the spot we're in right now. Really liking the spot that we're in. Yep, really liking the spot that we're in. Gonna play this soul herder. Waste your thing. Palace jailer. Get your goif. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> That's how you do it, I guess. That is how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> is that a swing? I think that's a swing. All right, see you for round number four. All right, welcome to round number four. Currently 3-0. and We completely destroyed my opponent's 5-0 uh, in the previous round. Sorry, opponent. Uh, this hand looks very sexy, though.
ancient tomb. Chalice? You got it. This could be mono red. This could be... The Aeon's deck again? The Ursa deck? Yeah, finally we didn't draw the Swamp, right. Stupid Swamp is in my opening hand every single time. I'm not fighting over this if my opponent wants to force this. Just f 6 for value. Look at that F6 value. Ooh, hello. Cavern of Souls. Nice forces, nerd. Dryad. Oh my god, we're playing against the freaking... We're playing against Titan Stompy? Well, we have no shot in a million years at winning this. That sounds great. We can never ever beat this deck. Go score. Got me. Um, well, they definitely have waste. Wait, do they have wastelands? Maybe they don't have wastelands. Let's risk it. Let's risk it for the biscuit. The idea there was to hope to find a land because we're, we're going to need lands here. The tempo play. I guess my opponent is taking some damage from this ancient tomb. No! That sucks for us. Also, Dryad means that they don't have to take damage from the Ancient Tomb. I risk it though. I risked it, I risked it, and I was punished. What you doing, opponent? Three mana. So this is gonna be Zenith. That gets excavator though, so it's gonna pitch force of negation. Probably don't have that many uses for for the force. Nice. Plus We really have to name Primeval Titan next turn. We can Force of Will if we need to, unless they have a, a second cavern. They would need exactly second cavern because the first one is named Dryad. So. I think there are no Titan decks without Wasteland. And also you don't have any blue blue spells to cast, so the Tundra will sort of risk no reward. Uh, well, there's there's Venser and there's the thing, right? Like there's the... Um, we're definitely taking this straight. Uh, there's um, Baron. But yeah, like obviously, I mean, I was seeing Ghost Squatter, and that's kind of what incentivized me to go that way. But in reality, 
in reality, oh, of course, like it just didn't work out. Oh, you made it my hand. Yeah, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. Well, this Teferi is doing nothing. So I'm just going to bounce this. Finding land is huge. So I think I'm plus in here because like the, the Dryad is going to be coming after my Teferi anyway. So that doesn't do anything because Chalice. But I'm definitely playing this. Can pitch the Medley Mage to the to the force if we need to. Opponent can redeploy the Dryad. But yeah, okay, congratulations on your PTQ win, Jeff, by the way. Rhyming app, yeah, fuck that guy. Can't ever beat that guy, so. Yeah, just beating him down. <laughs> Whole Richard beats, baby. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Um, all right. Well, Gilda Drake sounds very interesting. Gilda Drake sounds very, very interesting. Um, Operation sounds interesting. How would you board here, Jeff? Like we probably want scholar, we probably want mages. Peacekeeper is a little bit weird. We probably we could probably cut that. I imagine my opponent has field of the dead, though it's not a given. Venser, Palace Jailer sound okay to me. Forces maybe are not great. Of the negation variety. I'm definitely gonna keep the force of will, but and even still my opponent is playing probably like between two and four caverns. I've seen lists with anything ranging from two to four caverns. Is giver projecting back worth anything? No, because they just kill the giver and then you're that that's it. <laughs> so no, I don't think it's very good. I guess the fairy is also pretty mediocre. The fact that Giver can't protect itself, obviously, is... Oh, yeah, uh, please, uh, what's the Giver for, Jeff, if you're still here? I can, I, I, I understand overall. We just got the Engineer over... Okay. I I feel like I understand most of your decisions, but the Giver give, leaves me perplexed. Also, the split between Leyland and Rest in Peace seems, seems strange to me. Yeah, this card was insane. <laughs> we played against Delver and like fourth Ridge Brawler was like pretty sick. Which I wasn't expecting it to be that good. One off Sir Good. Can't argue with that. But I, I don't know like which matchups am I supposed to bring the giver in. That's the part that I'm not too... This hand is super medium. And my opponent kept seven. I think I'm gonna ship this. Like it's very likely they have they have uh, turn one, what's his name? Okay, so this is fine, much better. Probably gonna ship the meddling mage or the baron just ship the baron you're gonna love this <sighs> we're experiencing all of the two <laughs> all of the different two mana casting costs we are experiencing all of them <laughs> 
so there's nothing we can get off of this vista that will that will give us the mana that we need which is very funny So I'm going to Scholar here. Just going to get a white source. Now I guess it can't be a swamp. So this has to be an island or a plains. I think I want it to be an island or a... No. Huh. Yeah, I think it has to be plains and it has to be uh, underground sea here. Excuse me, what? Well, we're taking an engineer for sure because like scavenging news is like, why is scavenging news in my opponent's deck? That's what they play. Okay, that's brutal. So that's probably game losing for us. <sighs> Which sucks. In this case, I think I would have just cast Strix. But the problem is, if I cast Strix and my opponent, like they did have the Cavern, but let's say that they had another land and they had, uh, they had Titan, we just lose, right? And I, I can't really name... I mean, I could name Titan, but I also my opponent could also have Green Sun Zenith, so I don't know what I what I have to name. Like maybe because our mana is just terrible. Maybe because our mana is just awful, we just have to like eat it up. Because our mana is terrible. <laughs> our mana is really really bad here. Hmm. So one one. Stray two, baby. Now we need lands. Can I can I put vial on top here? I just don't have the time to do that, right? We're at 16, we're gonna take six this turn. And trading doesn't look great in the face of this scavenging news, so that's not really an option. Um, so we're gonna take six, then we're gonna take six again. Vial is gonna be at one, and then we have to chump block. Yeah, that's not a great idea. I guess we can keep Vial and Source to Plowshares. What if we keep them both? So, we keep them both. I wasteland my opponent's Ancient Tomb. They have zero cards in hand, we take six. We go down to 10. Next turn we top the uh, Source to Plushers. We STP the Dryad probably? Although I guess that we can STP the engineer and we can trade with the scavenger news. Yeah, okay, I think that's the plan. And then the Baleful Strix deals with the Dryad. Okay, yeah, so I think that this is actually fine. We need my opponent to whiff for a second here. But I think that our plan is sound. That's a whiff. So we're looking good. No blocks is what the doctor ordered. Now we're gonna waste their ancient tomb, play our vial. The reason to, for wasting the ancient tomb, of course, is to limit my opponent's options and to limit my opponent's top decks. 
So Scholar is going to get in there because it's not blocking, so. I guess they could have Dried Ever and they blow me out. I, I guess they don't blow me out. They get in for one more point of damage, but that point of damage could be important. Is this mana just bad because of your... No, it's just bad because of your... Because of your mana requirements. Your mana requirements are just very steep. There's the Dried Ever. Yeah, I'm that that might have been a pretty bad attack actually. Cause that makes Yeah. Now the force is out of the picture because I have to take the dryad attack. So now force doesn't do anything. Yeah, that, that was just a bad play. Damn it. Live and you learn, I guess. Well, I guess that the Dryad can't attack anymore. No, but I have to take the Dryad hit. So otherwise my opponent just plays Skull. Oh, wow. They have two caverns. That's huge. Wait, what? So they're just hoping that this is good enough? Trade here, chump attack there. Down to one we go. They don't have Titan mana. Though. <sighs> they could Zenith. Um. I think I'm just gonna main phase this because I need to find a land here. It's not a fetch, obviously. Yikes. Well, now, yeah, th there's no way they have a second dry diver. I'm not playing around second di second dry diver. I don't trust that you have two dry divers opponent. Yeah. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. No, don't draw something. Once upon a time. Hold. No. Ugh. Womp womp. Wow, that dried arbor. Ugh. That dried arbor got me got me pretty badly. I guess that it just makes sense for my opponent to be playing dried arbor, honestly. Bested by my own petard right there. It kind of, right? Um So I guess we're gonna just submit this again. Anything I want to change? Not really. It just looks fine. Just gotta play a little bit tighter. Mm okay. I'm expecting great things from you, Gilded Drake. I am expecting great things from you. Just came in to watch you play Legacy, getting wrecked by Drat, and I once more asked myself if I'm like... <laughs> that seems like a question that you ask yourself a lot, Rancid Flesh. Maybe you should always assume that, and then take it from there. 
Hopefully they just play a chalice or something irrelevant here. Abrupt decay is not irrelevant. Um, of the card. What do we want to get? I kind of want to get Soul Herder. We could also get Venser. Or we could get Palace Jailer. Man, we have so many options here. Alternatively, we could get Baleful. I think I'm just gonna get Medley Mage. And then next turn we can like Mage on Mage on Primetime. Also, they got double value and they're playing a the field of that deck. Seems weird. Wasteland. Sure. We can Charming Prince blink the recruiter. I really want to start drawing cards though. I think I'm just getting another Charming Prince here. If I draw land, we're going to be in really good shape. Price guild the Drake, just your casual 300 bucks. Don't worry about it. Just your casual 300 bucks. In paper. Nothing. Opponent does nothing. Pog. So I think I want. I guess I do want double white here. I'd like a Dread Arbor, please. Guess they should have attacked first. I mean, I needed mana, so this fixes that issue. So now I can Charming Prince blink the Gilded Drake in order to for it to die, I think. My opponent's not taking they're not drawing cards with library. I'll take it. It was gonna happen, right? <laughs> there was no way that this wasn't gonna happen. Um, just gonna name up Rob Decay.
And I think I'm just, I'm literally just scrying here. Um, never mind. We have Palace Jailer. Let's get a Palace Jailer, baby. Do I normally do legacy stuff on? Yeah, I always, I, I usually do legacy stuff on, on Wednesdays. It's not a smart decision. <laughs> it costs me a lot of viewers. But I, I love legacy. <laughs> you would prince the prince and then prince the drake. You think that's better than just like Palace Jailer in this and going to town? So that you get it on their end step. Wait, doesn't this doesn't this die if they don't have Doesn't this die if they don't have anything? Plague Engineer. So that kills my recruiter, but then we just plow this, so it's fine. I need to stop this library now. Still don't know whether I want to kill this engineer or not, so we're going to figure that out. If I take the Drake with Jailer and get the Marquee, then you... Yeah, that's what I was planning on doing. That's the plan that I was going for. Well, we're going to have to plow that, I guess. I'll take two. Sounds fine. So we plow the dryad. And now we jailer the gilded drake. I think this is the line. And now if they take back the monarchy, we steal their plague engineer. And they can't draw cards because of Holy Breacher. We're also racing them very effectively. It also draws me towards the land, hopefully. No such luck, but... Um, I mean, they could top deck exactly Ancient Tomb. Like, they don't have land, so they can top deck exactly Ancient Tomb and then cast a prime time, and then we would be in trouble. Is there a Legacy deck that plays Titan? Yeah, my opponents. So we just let this go. Like, we literally just take this... We get back the Gilded Drake, we steal my opponent's Engineer, and we just set up lethal, right? Like, this is just great <laughs> for us. <laughs> it also gives us a mana.
Dryad, okay. If they if they were sandbagging two lands from the previous turn, like they are just there that's some next level shit. And then we got a nice little treasure there. <laughs> got a nice little treasure for our troubles. And what's the line now? We can steal my opponent's dryad. Which fixes our mana and allows us to cast Baleful Strix. That's hilarious. Um, so... Well, my opponent doesn't want me to figure out. I think, I, I think it would have been better to just like Skyclave the Dryad and just serve everything. And that's just very much lethal, so... Anyway, see you. See you for the last round. Currently 4-0. Feels pretty good. All right, folks. For the 5-0. Playing against Matias KM. Beautiful hand. Let's go. Turn 1 Vile. You, you just don't mulligan and turn 1 Vile, right? Why would anybody ever mulligan a hand that has a Vile in turn 1? Basic Island Vile, go. Back in the day where rubber bots were made of wood. The good old times. The good old times. Island. Vile, go. I'm assuming my opponent is on Delver, right? In the blind, my opponent is on Delver, so we're just gonna name Lightning Bolt. More than that, by watching you and other Titan players, are there any good amulet primers out there that people know? That goes to some of the weirdo lines that come up. Ghoul in around most of them are old that I found. Uh, most of them are old. Yes, that's a that's a fact. Uh, but I have uh, the demystifying series. You can find a lot of information there. Yes, they are old, but so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm just I'm gonna bear in. And just balance my own meddling mage. And I guess I'm gonna name Tarmogoyf here. This draws us a card. Uh, I guess we just name a uh, Fatal Push actually. Nice. Abrupt Decay, definitely another consideration. Cool, Kakao, thank you for the prime sub. Coming back for the second month. I have to finish an amulet, first time league on a frame small account, and I 2 1 fix you. That's awesome, Cola Kakao. Welcome back to the prime time stronghold. And good job. You got a name Bird, name Human. Maybe I should have left Violent too. That, I, I, I was not thinking there. I was just <laughs> I was just thinking about chat and then I'm like, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, anyway, we're just gonna draw a three drop here. Look, look at that. Look at that. Told you. Gonna draw a card here. Yeah, 
let's just draw a card. Just gonna draw a three drop here, just like I told you, Chad. Look at that. Look at that three drop that we have off the top. Told you. Easy three drop. You won against Mill? What a legend. What a legend. Loam. Weird. I think we're going up, baby. What is this? Abrupt decay? Very lucky. Yes, I'm gonna use Sadie Ryle's ability. Just another land on top. Let's get a scrub land here. Put Yorion in hand. We got him in clock. Is this lethal next turn? So they need probably like what, like a sweeper? Sweeper plus force? They dredge long, they go down to three and they pack it in. Okay. They have main deck loam. Main deck loan. Probably don't want that one. Resting Beast sounds interesting. Remorseful Cleric sounds interesting. Gilded Drake does not sound great. I'm assuming my opponent is playing some sort of control deck. Oh, wow. Torbor gifting tier one sub. Line NTG, welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold. And Torbor, thank you so much for supporting the stream. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold blind. I bet it was worth a gift itself. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Torborg. There's three of those. There's part one, there's part two, and there's part three. But part two and three are more about like the evolution of the deck. So it, it's more of a more of a historic kind of thing. Um, so it's it's definitely interesting. It's, it's definitely interesting to see like the evolution of the deck throughout the years. I may be way off in my sideboarding here, but I think I like this. I love how just like a bunch of random nonsense tutus completely <laughs> destroyed my opponent there. <laughs> Imagine the standard word that it came from is evolution helps when thinking about how to build tweak in the future. Yeah, that's that's kind of the point. And also it's kind of entertaining, you know, just like I, I really enjoy when I look at, especially a deck with such history, just like Amulet, like it has a lot of history, so... I do enjoy like learning about how the, how the evolution, how the deck evolved, like how things changed, you know. 
like I wouldn't want to see like the evolution of burn because the lists have very much not changed in the past eight years, but <laughs> but then like amulet. I can imagine, you know, thinking about making a primer, like a, the history of burn. And then two years later, after we figured how the list should look, they printed Inspire Vantage. So we play that. And a couple of years later, they printed like the, the canopy land. So we added that. <laughs> the evolution of burn. <laughs> Three to that face, yeah, I know. Slam it. I think this hand's fine. I'm assuming my opponent's deck plays Wasteland, right? Like, you, you don't just jam life from the loam into your deck and not play Wasteland. What do I think of Amulet in the, today's meta? I think it's great. Probably tier two. Mmm, my opponent with a 61 card special. And then skipping their turn. Interesting play. Feeble Thup. They lost. Um. I think I'm gonna play this because if they wanna kill this, they need to name homunculus. Oh. Yeah, I I don't know about that one, bud. <laughs> I don't know about that strategy, buddy. I don't know about that strategy, buddy. Burn has an interesting Atarka's command face. Wow, we're really digging. We're digging real deep for that one, huh? Uh, am I just getting Palace Jailer here? How does my opponent beat a Palace Jailer? They just don't, right? When do I normally donos and still don't do the spell sheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, usually we do a donation deck list on uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays. And I was thinking of maybe doing some tomorrow, so I think I was going to be playing your deck tomorrow. I love how I never play Legacy. Like, I play Legacy once every week, and even, like, fairly often, I skip a day. I skip a Legacy deck. And then, like, whenever I play Legacy, I just randomly get a trophy. You love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, your deck's broken, Jeff. Your deck is completely broken. I imagine you got your old border pa palace jailers, right? <clears throat> you get the strictly superior art of a great card. Um, stifle jailer trigger. Stifle Monarch Trigger of Return, yeah, that, like that sounds like great strategy. <laughs> yeah, my opponent, I, I guess that they they were very, very aware of the existence of Rule 1 of 4.3a there. This list is just beautiful. This list is absolutely beautiful. Um, big fan of this deck, big fan of this deck. So many synergies. So many synergies all over the place. Like Gilded Drake plus Charming Prince, Gilded Drake plus Baron, uh, Fiddlethup plus Caracas. Um, like, it, it, so many great synergies. Like, so many, like, cool plays. I think this, this just has to be the hardest deck to play in Legacy. Because in the past, it was probably Doomsday, because you needed to really try hard, and you needed to know what you were doing in order to figure out how you were going to win. But, like, with now, with Thassa Circle just being easy mode, it honestly just feels like this deck is... This is probably, like, the hardest deck to play in Legacy. 
So um, if you're trying to have a good time in Legacy right now, I strongly recommend this deck. As you as you hopefully just saw during the league, uh, there, there's a ton of decisions every single turn. It is super super interesting, and uh, you know there's there's many many different ways to play every single turn, and that's the beauty of whenever you have uh, a toolbox deck, right? That's that's just how how the, the beautiful part about toolbox decks is like just infinite options all the time. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.